Tonight, as we've been doing for the month of, of June, we have been offsetting what they are calling Pride Month, and we're basically making this the Truth Month, that the name of Jesus will be lifted high in all of the earth, and we will make proclamation throughout this month, in particular, about the perils of the LGBTQIAP agenda and how we offset that with the gospel, with the truth, with the living word as our banner to proclaim to the nations that God is real and that he will be glorified in all the things that we do here. Guys, we are 25 episodes in, and I am excited about what's been going on with this program. And I want to just make this comment right up front. Thank you so much for all of those in leadership at WBGR TV, WBGR Gospel Network. You guys have proven that the truth can go forth on air and you've allowed me without any restriction to be able to share God's truth in a manner that we pray is uplifting, encouraging, along with corrective because we are in perilous times right now. So we cannot play around with the gospel and we cannot just have church like we've been having it. We cannot just talk about God the way we've been talking about him and not take into account the things that are going on in our world and our messages, whether they're from the pulpit, whether they're here on this network or on many other platforms uh, via social media. We must stand tall without fear and without trepidation and proclaim the acceptable year of our Lord. Hello, I'm Philip Howell, and I'm making this recording at the request of Mr. Lewis McElwain, very good friend of mine. Um, I've known him for many, many years. And I'm updating my, my condition um, that I've had since uh, the latter part of December. I came down with a, had a tumor, a cancerous tumor in my sinus, and it was it was successfully removed. However, I just found out uh, a couple of weeks ago that it's coming back and it's growing at a, at a very fast rate. And um, later on this morning, this is being Saturday uh, the 9th, um, I have to go to the dentist. I'm scheduled to go to the dentist this morning and they're going to remove all my teeth uh, in preparation for the chemo and the radiation that I'm going to be receiving. Um, and Monday, I'm going to get a mask made, you know, for the uh, radiation, and I'm required to take chemotherapy once a week um, and radiation therapy five times a week for six to seven weeks. Okay, and I was also informed, you know, as also uh, as research, uh, that the radiation is going to make me very fatigued because it's going to be from here all the way down to my neck, okay? And since radiation damages the good cells, uh, it takes a lot of your energy to repair those cells as while well it's uh, destroying the, the, the mutant cancer cells. And because of the energy that's expended, you feel very fatigued and tired. And this is what I'm faced with. And I'll be, I'll be going through this uh, for the six or seven weeks, six to seven weeks. And I will not be, I'm sure I won't be able to work. And uh, which is going to definitely put me in a financial bind. And it's not only going to affect me, but it's also also affect my family. Um, and I really appreciate your help uh, for whatever you help me, help me with. And um, I'm, I'm thanking you from the, from the bottom of my heart. 
ahead of time. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, prayerfully I will be hearing from you uh, by now. Tonight's episode is titled The Prideful Truth About Church Leadership. Now, I got to be honest with you guys, when I first approached this, I had in my mind just doing a whole bunch of series of clips and making some commentaries from some of the well-known leaders, pastors uh, that, you know, frequent our airwaves. And guys, I got to be honest with you, I was in the midst of doing all that. I had them all lined up. and then. I ran into this 31 second clip from Pope Francis, of all people. And in that 31 second clip, he touched on eight things that I could not ignore because, quite frankly, it goes against everything that is biblical. And I'm here to actually provide the receipts. Well, what I'm talking about. Ser homosexual no es un delito. Es una condición humana. Somos todos hijos de Dios. Y Dios nos quiere como estamos y con la fuerza que luchamos cada uno por nuestra dignidad. El ser homosexual no es un delito. No es un delito. Sí, pero es pecado. Bueno, primero, distingamos pecado por delito. Pero también es pecado la falta de caridad con el prójimo. Y vos cómo andas? When we think about a crime, we're looking at things from a man-made point of view, a man's perspective, a, a man's ideology. Uh, there's a difference between crime and the word that we in the body use, which is sin. And so I'm going to talk about those definitions later, but suffice it to say that, yeah, if you're going by man's law, these days at least, homosexuality is not a crime. However, it is an offense to God. When we look at Leviticus chapter 18, verses 22 through 23, this is what it says. It says, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. God is pretty clear that it may not be a crime by the standards of man, but it is sin before Almighty God. And in fact, we're not even using the word sin, a big word that's called abomination, abomination. I mean, it is utterly self-destructive and a serious offense to God. And I would actually ask Pope Francis, well, hey man, you are supposed to be an agent for God. You are supposed to be leading people in the direction of God. If you're going to stand as a figurehead for God, then you ought to be sharing the truth of God. And if God says that homosexuality, and in fact, in this verse, even bestiality, if God is saying that these things are an offense to him and self-destructive to us, then I think we ought to listen. Then the next thing he says is it's a human condition. I was thinking about the song back in the day, I'm only human prone to make mistakes. I mean, what a sad, sad song. Yes, we are human, yet at the same time, we are also spirit. And that spirit 
as far back as the book of Genesis says that the very breath of God was breathed into the dust of the earth and man became a living soul. Uh, homosexuality, you might want to call it a human condition, but I believe that it is a spiritual and moral condition of one's heart, of one's lust for themselves to replace God with oneself or with a particular sin or a particular discretion. And we rely on our feelings to lead us and dictate how we should be operating as human beings when in fact the Bible encourages us to actually die to self and to trust in the strength of God. Now, the easiest of all of these things that the Pope brought up is this one. It's a human condition. Well, listen to how God addresses this. John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The way I read that is that God, in his infinite wisdom, already understood that we would need a plan of salvation. And into the mix comes Jesus Christ, God in flesh, God fully human, but also fully God. And through Jesus Christ, God shows us that he understands we have a human condition, but we don't have to rely on that human condition to dictate how we act once we've accepted the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, into our hearts. Believe it or not, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So I pity those that are listening to Pope Francis or any leader like him who refuses to trust God and puts out there that we are only limited to our human condition. Wow. Now, in the next part, the pontiff actually goes to this. I, I can't believe he did it, but he said, we are all children of God. Okay. So the question that we need to ask as a body is, is that statement true? In Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 29, it reads like this. It says, for ye are all the children of God ah, by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if, listen to that, and if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
So if I ask that question again, the answer has to be no. But if you ask that question, are we all children of God, the qualifier for being a child of God is Jesus Christ. And only those who are in Christ can be God's children. Well, Pope Francis, this next one, you've done what so many people do. <laughs> they say, God loves us as we are. God loves me for who I am. You know, whenever we want to get away with anything related to sin or our sin nature before Christ, we fall back on that. Oh, God loves all of us, but he, and he loves us just as I am. I would argue that you can come unto him as you are if you are in the mode to be changed from who you were into what you could become in Christ. Listen to this, Romans 5, verses 8 through 10. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Does God love us as we are? Or can God actually see beyond who we are in the moment? And for some of us, we can actually be way more than who we think we are because in Christ, we are a new creation and those things of old have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If we are new, then God didn't love us just because of the way we are. He loved us because we decided to choose him and we choose him through Jesus Christ, through the shed blood of our savior. And it's only because of the life that was given for us can we then revel and meditate in this new life that God has prepared for us where we no longer have to be the creature of our father of lies, but we can actually live in the abundance of the Holy Spirit and thrive knowing that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, Pope Francis, this next one, I'm going to shred apart. You said, sir, to have the strength to fight for our dignity. Oh boy, all right. That is so wrong on so many levels. First of all, if we are in Christ, then we are to lay aside every sin and every weight that was so easily beset us and run this race with patience. That's the first thing. The second part of that is that we no longer have to rely on our strength because our strength has been found to be very weak when you line it up with God. So anybody that's talking about anything related to our strength, even to the pontiff, you are sadly mistaken, sir, because we no longer consider our strength. 
because our strength is what got us to the place where we fail God because we try to do things out of our strength, out of our understanding, out of our beliefs. And we didn't rely on God. And then the second part of that is fighting for dignity. What in the world does that mean? The dignity of who? Of us? Do we even care about our dignity? Do we not actually care about the witness of God our Father? Isn't that what we're here for? To represent him, to be ministers of reconciliation, to lift up the name of Jesus, not for our dignity. Our dignity, our reputation means nothing compared to the excellency of Christ. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 and 10. It says, and he said unto me, this is Paul talking, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, God's strength, is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I, I'm telling you guys, if you could embrace this, if you would get out of the pity parties, if you would stop believing the hype of how we have to embrace misery and understand that it is actually through our persecutions, our distresses, all of these things that seemingly are attacking us even to our physical, mental health, all of these things, if we understood it and realized that our strength means nothing, but his strength is made perfect in weakness. Well, now Pope Francis has gone and repeated what he started with. He started with homosexuality is not a crime. And right here, he talks about it again. Homosexuality is not a crime. So let me read this passage from Romans 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women, did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. The world is going to do whatever the world does. Homosexuality, and in fact, all of those letters, L-G-B-T-Q-I-A-P, all of them are an offense to God. They are a rejection of God. They are self-grandiose and not humility before God. And we who embrace the natural order of this world will die in the natural order of this world, which means you are going straight to hell. And those who are practicing this month and every month in pride, you have chosen darkness over light. Pope Francis then goes deeper into the quagmire. He talks about the distinction between sin and a crime. So I'm gonna give you the definition of both 
sin and crime. A sin is an act or behavior that is against religion or the will of God. Crime is an action against the law of man. I remember the old Hebrew national uh, commercial where the, the line was, uh, I answer to a higher authority. There is no way that I feel like I need to be or any believer needs to be sucked into a system that is trying to force us to conform to the nastiness of this world and to forsake God and his law and his standard of obedience. The devil is a liar if you believe that anyone who represents God truthfully would ever succumb to that. Lastly, Pope Francis says, it is a sin to lack love with one another. What about that? We have a scripture from 1 Corinthians 13, verses four through seven. It says, love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. But we know that God's love means that we must endure things for the sake of that love and to show that just as God has loved us, we show our love in return by accepting those things that the world hates, to suffer, to be corrected, to be rebuked. Jesus. 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 Don't need nobody 